day and thanks for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle and I hope to help in preparing for the private pilot checkride following the Airman certification standards. Today's video covers required aircraft inspections and aircraft logbook information. I have seen a few variations of this acronym, but I like to use AVATES with the I as a 1 instead. This includes the annual to be performed every 12 calendar months, the VOR inspection to be performed every 30 days, the 100 hour inspection to be performed every 100 hours in service, altimeter due every 24 calendar months, transponder due every 24 calendar months as well, the emergency locator transmitter or ELT due every 12 months, and ELT battery due every one hour of cumulative use or one half of the battery life. And finally, static encoder inspection due every 24 calendar months. As far as regulations are concerned, the annual and 100-hour inspections are covered in FAR 91409 Alpha and Bravo respectively. VOR inspections are covered in FAR 91171. The altimeter and static encoder inspections are covered in FAR 91411. The transponder inspection is covered in FAR 91413. And the ELT and ELT battery are covered in FAR 91207. The 100 hour inspection is required only if the aircraft is for hire. We will explain more shortly. The VOR, altimeter, and static encoder inspections are only required for aircraft operating under IFR, so we will not cover those further in this video. The annual inspection may take place of the 100 hour inspection. Though the annual and 100 hour follow virtually the same checklist, only an airframe and power plant mechanic, or ANP, with an inspection authority certificate or IA may sign off on the annual, while an ANP without an IA may sign off on the 100 hour inspection. Because of this, the 100 hour inspection may not take place of the annual. The 100 hour inspection is only required if the aircraft is for hire. In this case, an aircraft for hire is any aircraft carrying passengers for hire or being used for flight instruction and the instructor provides the aircraft. The 100 hour limitation may be exceeded by 10 hours while en route to a place where the inspection can be performed. The excess time may not be used in computing the next 100 hour inspection. For instance, if the next 100 hour were due at 300 hours, the pilot may fly up to 310 hours en route to a maintenance facility. If the aircraft reaches the maintenance facility any time after 300 hours, the next inspection will still be due at 400 hours time in service, not 405 hours for example. This is typically measured by observing the Hobbs time. ELTs can be tested for the first 5 minutes of every hour and transmit on frequency 121.5, offering us another easy memory aid. The ELT is to be inspected every 12 calendar months, while the ELT battery is to be replaced or recharged when the transmitter has been in use for one cumulative hour. This means that the transmitter can be used one time for 60 minutes, two times for 30 minutes, ten times for six minutes, or any similar combination adding up to an hour, or when the battery is at one half of its useful life. This date, established by the transmitter manufacturer, is to be marked on the transmitter and in the aircraft maintenance logs. Moving on to record keeping requirements, according to FAR 91417, records to be logged include any performed maintenance, preventative maintenance, and alteration of records of the 100 hour, annual, progressive, and any other required or approved inspections. Additional records to be kept are to include total time and service of each engine, propeller, and rotor, the current status of the life-limited parts of each engine, prop, and rotor, as well as each airframe and appliance, the current inspection status of the aircraft, the current status of all applicable airworthiness directives covered in the next video, and copies of forms for each major alteration to the airframe and currently installed engines, rotors, propellers, and appliances, otherwise known as an FAA Form 337. These records are to include a description of the work performed, date of completion, and the signature and certificate number of the person approving the aircraft for return to service. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you'll like, comment, subscribe, or share if you found this video helpful. Safe flying.